Welcome back everyone, it's Mindy here today for Law and Fawn and I'm going to be taking you through the steps how I created this really fun pumpkin patch card using the mini pop-up box card die. It's getting to be that time of the year for visiting pumpkin patches so I thought this would be really great to create a scene using these. So I'm going to be starting out by getting my images all colored up with my Copic markers. There are a lot of images and a lot of coloring. This did take me probably all in all about an hour to get through all of my coloring. So I did super speed this up, but I have all of the colors listed at the top of the screen. I'm starting out with these cute little squirrels and some pumpkins. This is from the Pick of the Patch stamp set. And for the squirrels, I did E37, E35, and E33. I started with the lightest color, which is the E33. And then I added in my E37, the darkest color, and then blended out with the E35, just to get a really nice good blend. I am using the new Lawn Fawn white cardstock, also stamped with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is Copic Safe. And I have to admit, I do color, I, I add a lot of layers to my coloring a lot of times, and this cardstock held up really, really well. So I was really happy with, this, with the results from the white cardstock from Lawn Fawn. Now on to my pumpkins. Uh, a lot of times when I'm coloring, I'm just grabbing something off of the rack. I don't really have a plan in mind. So I did kind of switch out what colors I used in my pumpkins. What I ended with was YR27, YR68, and YR16. Those were the colors that uh, I ended up really liking when I was switching around. So that is what I went with for the majority of the pumpkins. And I did some really simple quick coloring on here. I added the darkest color to the outside. Ended out with my mid-tone and made the middle of the pumpkins the lightest color, which is the YR16. And then I just came in with some greens really quick for the stems, G24 and G28. Next, I have some images that I stamped, and I was using Happy Harvest. That is where all the crows came from. And I also used hay there, and I just used the pig, the cow, and the barn. I was just trying to include a few of the animals that I would see maybe at the pumpkin patch, and they have petting zoo. So for the crows, I am using... N6 and N4. So I laid down a light color and just quickly coming in with some shadows. I did just show you a few of the birds and then the rest I did off camera just to save some time. And I added the darkest color mainly to the back of the crows. Like I said, just trying to get a little bit of dimension, but I knew I had a lot of coloring so I didn't go overboard with it. And then since I had my ends out, I used them to color the hooves on the pig and the spots on the cow. And then same thing, just adding some really quick shadow areas to them just to give it a little bit of dimension. Then for my little piggy and the muzzle on the cow, I am going with some light pinks. I'm doing R21, R12, and R01. And once again, just adding a little bit of shading under the ears and under the neck, just to break that up a little bit. And I just came in with a C1 a little bit for the cow so it wasn't stark white, just a little bit there. Now for my barn, I'm using R24 and R39 for the main part of the barn and N6 and N4 for the roof. And you can see I just kind of really went in there with some quick colors. I didn't even add any dimension to the door. I just threw on some of the browns that I had from previously. So for my sunflowers, this is also... Uh, from the Happy Harvest stamp set and the Scarecrow. I'm adding in a really light color here, so Y11. And then I just went over those lines with the Y19. Now for the middle, I'm doing E55 as a real quick base coat. Then I'll add in a darker color, which is the E59, just to one side. And I'll blend that out with an E57, which is the mid-tone and then the E55, which is the lightest color, just to try and give that a little bit of a rounded look. I thought these sunflowers really added to my pumpkin patch scene that I was gonna be creating. For the scarecrow, I'll be starting off by doing the face, and I did E04, E11, E21, and E01, and I added that E04 right under the straw and also uh, the hat line and blended that out. 
For the overalls, I'm using B99, B97, and B95. And then for my hat, I'm going to do E37, E34, and E30. I was trying to use markers that I already had on my desk, maybe pulling out one or two, but I try to use what I already have out. And then for the shirt, since I already had reds on my desk, I'm using R89, R59, and R46. The R89 I pulled in just to really give that a little bit more uh, depth and dimension underneath the arms. So once all the Copic coloring is done, I'm going to go ahead and die cut everything out of here. So I'm using the coordinating dies for everything, and I'm holding this all down with some Thermal Web Purple Tape. So this is a really great sticky tape that will hold these dies in place and not rip your paper. And these really do hold it. I like to put it on the top and the bottom of the die because when I'm moving things around, I tend to bump it. And so this really holds it in place so that they cut out perfectly for me. And I also wanted to give a couple of my pumpkins a little face, so I'm going to use some of the faces off of that Pick of the Patch stamp set. And using the black licorice ink and a clear block, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp those in the middle of the pumpkins. I just did it for a couple of the smallest ones that I would have in the front of my pumpkin patch. Now they have those cute little Halloween faces. For the main portion of my card, uh, for my card base, I am using a Bristol, a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I didn't score it yet. So this is measuring four and a quarter by eleven, and I didn't want to score yet because for my ink blending, I didn't want it to get bunched up where the score line was. So I'm leaving this straight for now. And for my uh, distress oxides, I'm using Wild Honey and Carved Pumpkin. Carved Pumpkin is towards the top and then blending down towards the bottom with the wild honey. And once I had that blended, I wanted it a little bit dark, darker towards the top. So I did reach over and pull out ripe persimmon. I wanted to kind of have it lighter towards the hills where all my characters would be, and then getting it darker as it went up. Now Bristol Smooth Cardstock is a really great cardstock for ink blending just because it is really nice and smooth. Everything blends together really well. And I do like to kind of clean up my messes in between. That's why I'm using the glass mat because it's super quick to clean up. And then just dusting the top of this with the ripe persimmon. For my background, I also wanted to give this some sparkle. I was just in a sparkly kind of mood, so I'm going to use this glitter dust in gold. And this is from Thermal Web. This is one of my favorite products is the gold and silver and it's really hard to see here but I did spray this really really well in a well ventilated area and it will take a little bit to dry because it is kind of tacky to the touch but it has this beautiful sparkle to it so while my background is drying I'm gonna work on the front of my card so here I have a piece of cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half using the fall nitpicky paper pack and also white cardstock that I had cut from the quilted backdrop. And I had just trimmed that down for the front of my card and attached that with the Lawn Fawn liquid glue. I also die cut out the bunting banner from some chocolate bar cardstock and attached that across the top. And then I also trimmed out those pennants from the nitpicky fall paper pack as well. And now I'm going to take some of these crows, and this reminded me afterwards of the Dumbo movie with the crows that are on the, the wire. <laughs> I just thought this was really cute. So I added the crows on there and I cut the happy fall line border from some of the autumn glitter cardstock and attached that down to the front. And my sunflowers, I'm actually going to use these uh, foam squares and these are super, super sticky. Just to forewarn you. So I just attach these to the back and I'll pop them up on the end of my banner. And I thought this was just a really cute, simple front of the card to kind of prepare you for all the glitter and fun that's going to be in the inside. Now I'm going to start working on the inside of my card. So I did go ahead and score this at five and a half and fold that. And then I'll crease it down really well with the bone folder. It was still a little bit sticky, but I made it work. I just had to be really careful 
not to push down too hard on that area where I had sprayed the glitter dust. So now I'm going to be taking my stitch till sides that I created using that uh, nitpicky fall paper pack. This is such a cute paper pack. I love it. It's so cozy. So these just work really well for my stitch tills. And I had to trim them down to fit in the inside of my card. And using the thermal web tape runner, I'm going to attach these hills, but I'm leaving a little bit of a gap at the top. I'm not taking that tape runner all the way up because I want to tuck things behind my hills. And this is how I like to attach my items when I have the card like that. I kind of fold it up and butt my paper up against that crease. And now I'll come in and I'm just going to start gluing down all of my elements. I want to create my scene before I do the mini pop-up box. And I know this is all super sped up, but this is now just getting the scene put together. There isn't a lot of uh, technique to show with it. It's just kind of showing you where I placed everything, how I placed it down. Um, I did slow it down for when I get to the mini pop-up box part because I know those can be kind of tricky. So these are some puffy clouds that I die cut out of the Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust cardstock. It's a glitter cardstock and that glitter cardstock is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of it. I can add glitter and sparkle to my card without anything flaking off. My barn, I just kind of tucked behind my hill. That's why I left that gap there so I can tuck things back there. And then just coming in and starting to align where I want all of my pumpkins. So I'm keeping the bigger ones in the back because I wanted to make sure you could see everything. And my cow kind of creating, creating my farm scene here. We go to the pumpkin patch every year with the kids and they just love it. And depending which one you go to, some of them have a petting zoo, some of them have corn mazes which is why I kind of incorporated all of it into this one card. So just going through and attaching all of my cute little critters. I thought that squirrel was super cute to put on the top. And then I have some corn stalks here that I had stamped in both the dough ink from Lawn Fawn and also the sunflower ink from Lawn Fawn and then just die cut those out. And my cute little scarecrow to add on top and a couple crows on his arms. Now I'm going to start working on creating my actual pop-up box. So I did die cut this from the Lawn Fawn wood grain cardstock. I was kind of picturing a crate of sunflowers. So I'm just going through and scoring along or folding in along those score lines that are already cut. It's kind of hard to see in camera but the score lines are there. So I'm just folding all of those in making sure those are really nice and creased and then folding these flaps back on the top of the box. Just getting a really good score line. And I kind of play with it a little bit, make sure it's going to fold the way I want it to. And then these are two of the, I cut two of the inserts. You can do the straight one or there's another one that kind of has uh, a, a different bend to it, a different style of adding these to the inside of the box, but I went with the straight ones. So you can see this is how the box is kind of forming, how it would go together. And for lining up my inserts, I really liked how Shari did it. So that's the, the steps I followed. It was really easy to do it this way, to add these inserts before putting the box on my card. So I'm just adding a little bit of this Thermal Web Easy Tear uh, tape to the edges and also to that side flap where my box will connect. And then once I remove the adhesive, I'm going to go ahead and attach one of the sides to my box. You can see I'm going right up to that one score line. I'll kind of fold it over and I'm testing it out where it's going to attach. So once I have that one done, I'm going to go ahead and place this other one right next to it. So I'll have those two inserts right next to each other and there will be a little bit of a gap once they're attached. And then we'll fold those over and that is how we'll attach them is by closing it together. And you can see I'm kind of showing you, giving you an idea how it's going to look and giving myself an idea since I was the first time I created uh, the mini pop-up box. So I just removed that adhesive and folded that box over so you can see that worked out perfect and then removing this adhesive to attach that side panel and make it a box. And this tape is really good and holds these flaps together really really well. 
And there we have our cute little pop-up box. So next, for my sunflowers, the stem that was on the stamp set was a little too small. So what I cut here from the cilantro cardstock is actually one of the uh, add-ons. I, I shouldn't say add-ons. It's part of the mini pop-up uh, set. So I just cut a bunch of those out of that cilantro cardstock. It's kind of more, it was supposed to be a decorative item or uh, adding other things to them. So I just used them as stems for sunflowers and that worked out perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and start working on getting my box attached. So I'm taking this easy tear tape again and I'm going to apply it to these kind of triangle at the bottom of the box. This is what is going to attach to the card. I'll go ahead and just making sure I'm putting a lot on there, making sure this is going to really stick to my card and not let loose. So one more piece there. So now I'm just pushing down on that tape really, really well so it's going to attach good to the cardstock and I won't worry about it coming off. And I can remove the backing on just one of those triangles. And then I'll kind of fold the box so that those triangle is sticking out. And I'll push that down up to the crease of my card where it's going to fold together. So just the one side for right now is what I'm going to attach. And then just giving that a good push, making sure that that's stuck down really well to my card base. And it folds really nice, giving that a test run before I finish. And then I'll go ahead and remove the backing of the other side and I can fold that card up and it's going to attach to the other side of this triangle. So you can see I'll fold that up. It's going to attach and then when I open it up we have our pop-up box. Now I do have a little bit of a gap in there that's just from how I had placed it but other than that that worked out really really good. So now I'm just kind of finishing off getting the rest of my card put together. So I'm taking the front panel I had created and using the thermal web tape runner, I'm attaching that to the front of the card. So that's going to finish off this part. And open it up and we have this gorgeous pumpkin patch scene with the little farm critters. And now I can start working on uh, my sunflowers for in my box. So this did take me a little bit because I was kind of holding these sunflowers in here. Uh, I just used the Lawn Fawn with liquid glue. And as I did each sunflower, I kind of gave it a test run to make sure that they weren't uh, going to get crushed when I opened or closed the card. And if I was thinking I would have added, I like working in odd numbers. And I should have made an extra one, but I used a couple in the front of the card. And so I did end up with six sunflowers that'll be popping up out of the box, but they're still so cute. I think this was such a cute uh, pop-up to have as this box of sunflowers. It just fits so perfectly with the pumpkin patch scene I had going on. So I'm just holding this for a couple seconds, making sure that this attached really well. And I would say, like I said in the beginning, it took me about an hour to get all of my images colored up and to actually complete the pop-up and the scene in the inside that probably took me another hour. It was just kind of really therapeutic to create these really fun scenes and you can combine so many different images with the Lawn Fawn products. So I really enjoyed this. And then just giving this a test run, open and close, making sure that everything is popping up where it should be. And that's going to finish up my tutorial for you today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And we'll give this mini pop-up box card a try. These are really, really cute. So thank you so much again for stopping by and have a great day.